Night at 6 on Eyewitness Sports. It's going to open the door for organized crime to come our way. Uh, we're going to find more and more of their activity if this should become legal in the state. Of course, it involves a lot more than just passing a lottery. It's a question of whether or not the state ought to be in the gambling business. A state lottery in Georgia, would it be a sinful invitation to organize crime or a way to raise millions of dollars for better education? And does it have any chance of passing? Good afternoon, I'm Scott Montgomery, and this is Tell Us What You Think. Today, we explore the hottest issue in the state of Georgia, whether or not to legalize a state lottery. Georgia senators have approved a plan to put the issue to the voters in 1990, but House members are still considering the lottery. And Governor Joe Frank Harris says he'll do everything he can to kill it. Many Christians are also against the lottery, but state law lawmakers are under a lot of pressure to let the people decide. In Florida, a state lottery raises hundreds of millions of dollars, and half of it goes to education. If Georgia approves a state lottery, it would also be used to help pay for schools. But the plan is drawing fire from many churches, like this one in Ringgold. Opponents worry that needy Georgians might be tempted to ignore basics for their children and buy lottery tickets instead. One member of First Baptist told us she saw that happen in Florida. We see like a parent standing there with three children without shoes buying $10 worth of tickets when they could be spending that money on milk, bread, and other groceries. So I'm against it. In Georgia, senators have approved a state lottery, and now House members must vote. However, instead of taking a strong stand on this sensitive proposal, critics contend many lawmakers are trying to shift responsibility to the voters by supporting a referendum on the state lottery. I personally think it's a sellout to a degree. If they're against it, they should be against it in their vote, not, uh, not hedge and then let someone else vote for them. Although some opponents would like to kill off a state lottery before Georgians have a chance to vote on it, others say people have a right to decide the issue at the polls in 1990. If I get more calls, more interest, more letters about people wanting uh, the opportunity to vote on this thing, I might have to go uh, for the folks. If that's what I'm down there to represent the people, and if that's what they want, that's what I'm going to have to do. Whether Florida's experience with the state lottery has been good or bad is open to debate. But it's clear there will be a lot more debate in Georgia as residents and lawmakers wrestle with this issue. Now in just a minute, we'll hear from a Georgia state representative in the studio and from a religious leader on the proposal for a state lottery. Stay with us. When I was chosen runner-up in the Mrs. Washington State Beauty Pageant, I received a polite round of applause. But when the audience found out I once weighed 200 pounds, well, it nearly brought the house down. Want to know how I lost 68 pounds without fad diets, drugs, or gimmicks? You'll discover all the secrets of my success right here in this free book from Prevention Magazine. You'll also read other true stories from women and men in all walks of life who have lost as much as 81, 106, even 164 pounds by simply following the safe, natural prevention method with no dieting, no strenuous exercise, no drugs or pills. Call now for Prevention's No Diet, No Willpower Weight Loss Book. It'll be sent to you free with your no-risk trial subscription to Prevention, America's leading health magazine, read by over 8 million people every month. In Prevention, you'll discover how to walk your way to super health and slimmer hips, block a stroke with better nutrition, and have younger, smoother skin for life. Prevention will show you how to build stronger bones, heal your aching joints and muscles, fight fatigue, have more energy, and use your mind to heal your body. You'll see how to lose weight and feel great. Lower your blood pressure and strengthen your heart. Take vitamins more wisely and much, much more. Try a subscription without risk. If not delighted, get back every penny you paid, no questions asked. For your health's sake, put your trust in prevention. Call now to get 12 issues of Prevention Magazine for just $13.97, a savings of $4 off the cover price, plus free with your paid subscription, Prevention's No Diet, No Willpower Weight Loss Book. 
Call now, 1-800-421-7600. That's 1-800-421-7600. Call for your free weight loss book right now. You're watching Tell Us What You Think. And today we're talking about whether a state lottery should be approved in Georgia. With us today, Representative Ken Poston, new member of the Georgia House from Fort Oglethorpe and Ringgold, and Reverend Jimmy Hatcher, Director of Missions for the Catoosa County Baptist Association. And thank you both for coming in. Thank you, Good to be here. Ken, let me start with you. Where do you stand on the issue of a lottery? It's very controversial. I know it's hard to take a stand at all, but... It's been an interesting year to start out in the General Assembly in Georgia, I'll tell you that, Scott. A lottery, a state lottery, is not the revenue uh, saving grace as it's cracked up to be uh, by a lot of promoters. It, at the same time, though, it is a, it is a, uh, a way to, to make revenue that over half of the states in the country have applied uh, it in their own states. Uh, however, it's not all that it's cracked up to be to make millions and millions of dollars to uh, supplant taxes. Uh, and Georgia needs more money, basically, right now, right? We're in a budget crisis this year. And uh, unfortunately, this is a, the last few years have not been uh, popular taxing years. Mm -hmm. So uh, this seems to be just an alternative that springs up. Uh, it hasn't been in Georgia before because we've, we haven't had a budget crisis like this in quite a while. So... If it came down to the vote, which it will in the House, are you going to vote for it or against it? Scott, the vote is not for or against a lottery. Uh, there is no way that I could, uh, as a representative, vote and that then the lottery would be instituted. Right. Under the Constitution of Georgia, the only way a lottery could be instituted is if the people vote on it. Now, I don't see that as a cop-out, nor do I see this as a litmus test for Christianity. Uh, when polls, uh, one of your competing stations up here uh, called me the other day with results from a poll, call-in poll they did. Of course, that was probably a three or four state area. Seventy some odd percent wanted the choice. Uh, a couple of Fort Oglethorpe television stations, or one at least, did a poll. Seventy-seven some odd percent wanted a choice. This comes down to, to me as a freshman. Uh, where I'm trying to draw upon the basic theory of representative government. That's what I'm trying to draw upon. Naturally, I can't call my constituents on every vote because we have dozens a day. But on the important ones, you do so want you, to get their input. You favor allowing the people to vote on this? I favor allowing the people. That is my first reaction. Now, however, I do have some problems with the plan uh, from the Senate. Uh, I talked to Reverend Hatcher the other day, though. And as a freshman, I don't feel comfortable in offering another plan. I don't feel that uh, all fired up about a lottery in the first place. But at the same time, you, you, don't, you don't sneeze at 125 to 150 plus million uh, net proceeds that the state could get. For education. For education or other purposes. I would, I would rather see a, 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 a lottery that if, there, if we were to institute one, uh, one that would be dedicated in addition to general funds instead of replacing general funds because I believe overall it would hurt education right now. Okay. Reverend Hatcher, uh, of course he's right. They're not voting directly on a state lottery in the House and they didn't in the Senate. They're voting on whether to put it on the ballot. But what do you think about that? If he votes to put it on the ballot, is he in effect maybe helping a lottery pass if people decide that they want one? I personally feel at this time that he would be helping it pass. And I would encourage all of the legislators, legislators of Georgia to come to a conviction of their own. We have elected them to represent us, it's true. But we also entrusted them with, the, with an honor to make decisions and vote their convictions. And I feel that uh, those who represent us have are challenged to make a decision and stand firm on that decision, not so much as to vote what someone else feels they should do. But I think what he's saying is he's getting conflicting signals. He's hearing that a majority of his constituents want to be able to vote on this. So, you know, should he ignore that and just make a moral choice of his own and 
it's it's a pretty tough situation to be in, wouldn't you think? Very tough. I'm glad it's that he's in it, and not me. <laughs> but let but me say, I, I would have to vote my personal conviction if I. You would ignore it. seventy percent of your constituents. I would have to. Let me say on on matters. Uh, the, the lottery presents uh, matters of of a technical nature, of a of a financial nature, and of course of moral the moral issues. On the financial issues, I've deferred a. G.W. Hogan, our state auditor, he is a very conservative individual fiscally. Uh, on moral issues, I often defer to my own minister. And, and many times, a couple of times that I've talked to uh, Reverend Hatcher here, and I take all of that into consideration. But at the same time, as a politician, you wouldn't serve more than your freshman term, perhaps, if you ignored the constituents on every well, issue, on this 70%, issue, right? The, the word around the <laughs> Capitol on this issue is, the, the folks that uh, are really want it, or the folks that want a choice, they'll forget it if you vote against it. But Is the folks who do not want it, they'll remember it if you <laughs> vote for it. And that seems to be the, the, the word around the House, and I'm sure that's true because they are the most active in it. But I can't let, uh, in, my, in my view, uh, this issue would be the same, uh, and I think Reverend Hatcher knows this, this is issue, my position, I feel, would be the same if this were an issue that the churches were really wanting to get before the public, such as a school prayer issue mm. or an abortion issue. There may be one soon coming up that they really do want the public to decide and not 100, 180 members of the House and 56 members of the Senate. What about the House? Is it going to breeze through the House and pass the Senate? But I think it's facing a lot of trouble in the House. Uh, and For one thing, just the politics of the situation, uh, lotteries have not been popular in the South. Of course, we haven't had budget crises mm. in the South uh, like we do now. And it's all from, from a lot of the growth we've got. Uh, the revenues aren't catching up with the, the demand for services. So we are in a budget crisis, not unlike what the Northeastern states have been facing for years. And of course, they, they have obtained lotteries. Again, it hasn't cured all their ills. It, the governor, of course, is very much against this uh, proposal. Is he going to be lobbying members of the House? Have you heard from him on this? I haven't heard from the governor on this issue. I've seen him on other issues that he's been interested in, and he never has really made a, uh, a strong statement in our presence. Of course, uh, publicly he's another. saying he will not have he's a lottery. A, he's a very fine man, and he, he's against it, and I respect his opinion on that, and I believe everybody does. This is, this is one of those issues that, that I hope everyone can respect opinions on. Uh, personally, I, I don't feel that it's the, the overriding, again, uh, revenue saver, hmm. but I also don't see it as the uh, Pandora's box of, of, of organized crime that some people do, because it's not really allowing, and, and I would not be for allowing just a, an open door for anybody to set up a private lottery. These are state-run, uh, state-affiliated uh, business. Okay, Reverend Hatcher, I know you disagree with that opinion that organized crime uh, wouldn't rush into this. Uh, but what about it? Uh, you have state regulations, as he said. Uh, you know, you don't think there'd be enough control to keep, keep uh, the mob out of this? I think, uh, so far as the state operation, possibly so. But uh, organized crime goes undercover. And they're going, they're going to get their part of the pie some way and I, I see them coming in and taking advantage when the state approves it mm. and says it's all right to do it then they are going to be, feel freer to come in and take advantage of the situation we know that we already have numbers games in Georgia uh, being operated to a large degree by uh, organized crime and other forces of that type but they they are having to keep it under cover you would and think that they would be more interested in a casino or something that they could own directly a business, but you're saying whenever there's that well, much money involved. <laughs> they're the going to be there to get their part. Okay. And uh, I think they would be. Horse racing, casinos, I think would be more appealing to them. I, they'll take advantage of any opportunity they have. I think that it would all be quite boring. Uh, you saw how big horse racing went over in Alabama. Mm. Uh, their track <laughs> closed down. Uh, I've lived in, in uh, or I've visited states and lived in Washington, D.C. for a short time as I worked there. Had free access to all of the lotteries in, in those states and districts around there, and, and I, I never felt the urge to play one. 
uh, nor have I ever played one. But at the same time, uh, the, there is an argument that this would promote the illness of gambling. Uh, I, the illness of gambling, most studies show, is brought on by something that involves some skill, uh, risk, and a possible quick payback. Mm -hmm. Now, as a, in contrast, a, a state-run lottery is quite unexciting. There's probably a, you will have to wait about a month, and odds are you're not going to win. But are you saying that that would keep organized crime out of it just because it's not exciting? They care about I'm money, I'm afraid organized crime, it just permeates uh, society anyway, I'm afraid. So from false drug, issue is what you're saying, a red herring there. I don't, I don't know that it even uh, is, affects this They're issue. already here. They, they, <laughs> That's right. No surprise. Okay, we're going to take a commercial break at this point, but there's a lot more to talk about. We'll be back right after this. Time Life Books is offering extraordinary savings on one of our best sellers, so stay tuned. Gentlemen, are there any further questions? Sir, the crew chief has the jets code one, gas loaded and ready to go. 24 years old and in control of a $20 million flying arsenal, the dramatic stories of the pilots, their machines, and the wars they fought are told in gripping first-hand accounts and exciting photography in Time Life Books, The Epic of Flight. Be sure to get the lasers in the basket. We want no collateral damage. These handsome books with richly embossed covers put you in the middle of bombing raids and dramatic dogfights from Midway to Mig Alley, from the Battle of Britain to the 17th Parallel. Your first book, Fighting Jets, places you in the cockpit of the day's most sophisticated aircraft for a hands-on feel of this devastating technology. Other books introduce you to the aces of the feared Luftwaffe, drop you smack on the deck of the carrier war, and take the shroud off the Soviet Air Force. Our objective is to turn the target into dust. The Mirage 2000, the Phantom, the Skyhawk, the MiG. What's it like to control them? To fly at a thousand miles per hour in hostile skies with split seconds and a heat-seeking missile between success and failure. Call now to get the Fighting Jets for a free examination. If you keep it, your introductory price is just $3.99. When future books arrive, keep only the ones you want. Cancel at any time. Ben, keep your mock up, your head out. Good hunting. The Epic of Flight from Time Life Books. A dramatic story that shows no matter how high-tech we get, it all comes down to a young pilot with nerves of steel. Hi, I'm Beth at Time Life Books. Right now, you can get our introductory volume, Fighting Jets, for the special price of only $3.99. That's a savings of $10 on one of our most popular volumes. Others will follow about every other month at the regular price of only $13.99. Buy only the ones you want. Cancel at any time. As a special gift, you'll receive this digital watch free when you purchase Fighting Jets. But hurry, this offer ends soon. So call 1-800-822-6500. That's 1-800-822-6500. Welcome back to Tell Us What You Think. Today we're talking about the proposal for a state lottery in Georgia. Reverend Hatcher, uh, let me ask you first off uh, here, do you really think that a lottery is the same as gambling? It is a form of gambling. And I would go further to say that it is a sin to, for one to involve themselves in any, any form of gambling. I think, I think bingo, raffles, whatever, any chance, game of chance, is, is gambling. You're really going to say that buying one of these lotto tickets is the same as going to Las Vegas and playing the casinos and losing a couple thousand dollars no. or whatever? For Scott, me personally, it would be. Scott, I will, I will agree with the Reverend that it is a form of gambling, if you want the, the broad definition of gambling. Technically. Uh, a yeah. technical definition of gambling. Uh, what I was saying a minute ago, however, is that it, it doesn't seem at least the form that the state is considering and that most states have passed in this country uh, has not got the quick payback possibility or the high risk that uh, addictive gambling games do. Uh, it's not an easy choice for a state to make, and it's certainly not a popular one just to have, because I believe most people, to sell them, most states have tied it to some popular programs, such as education uh, or elderly programs or road programs or something like that, mostly education, as in what our Senate version has in Georgia. Uh, but it's, again, if, if I have problems with that. But at the same time, I, I don't think that uh, there have been examples of lotteries in the past, good ones and bad ones. 
one of the problems that we in the South, I believe, have always had with a lottery is that Louisiana had one uh, over a century ago mm -hmm. that became corrupt within its administration. And, and that really turned the South off on lotteries for years. But the uh, again, we haven't had a budget crisis to mandate one. Or, or, and then here we are in a year where a president, who I think unwisely and, and possibly recklessly or prematurely campaigned on no new taxes, read my lips, mm -hmm. made it very popular not to raise taxes. Don't you know that that filtered down to every race? I'm and sure. so uh, all of the members of the House and Senate uh, in Georgia and in any state, I would say, and on the federal level, do not want to raise taxes because a lot of them felt like that was a mandate from the people. Let me get back to one point you made a little bit earlier. You contrasted lotteries with other forms of addictive gambling, but I know, Reverend Hatch, you were telling me uh, during the break that uh, even lotteries can be addictive to some people. That's right. I, just today, I read an article uh, quoting a psychiatrist that was treating a client who was addicted to the lottery uh, said he had several clients that were spending $500 a day and he uh, said that one had reported to him that he had spent as much as 7000 in one day on, on lottery. lottery tickets. Again, there are many moral issues involved in this. I haven't heard of that particular case. So I had in that case. Yeah. Um, at the issues, financial issues to consider. But this is not, and I didn't intend for this to become a debate on no. a lottery. Right. I think uh, Jimmy didn't right. intend for that to that's become right. that because I have problems with the version that's going to face the House, that's going to become uh, before the House. I don't plan to amend it or do anything active toward changing it into a plan that I would, would uh, better desire. But at the same time, the issue goes to the very core of representative government. What I would like for the people to do is to, instead of sending me their vote against gambling, I don't want gambling, I'd rather them say whether or not they wanted a choice on mm -hmm. the issue. That's the kind of mail that I want to get from the people. Do and you I, want a choice? Do you want to be able to vote? Do, yes, I do want a choice. No, I do not want a choice. Or no, I do not believe we should have a choice. Because I don't, I don't know if, if the information, we've always had a problem yeah. getting information out of Atlanta because Chattanooga area serves our our media mm. interest and that's always been a frustration that we made the whole story may not be coming out of our our government okay well let's talk about what else we brought up that point several times that maybe Reverend Hatcher this will not solve all the problems in education it won't raise that much money but you still have problems in education in Georgia you you know one of the uh, lowest uh, funded educational systems in, in the United States among the 50 states. So how would you raise it? Would you raise it through an increase in the sales tax? Would you uh, increase the income tax? Are you going to really be willing to pay more? The sales tax, to me, would be the fairest and most equitable approach that could be made. And I would have no problem with adding a one cent uh, to the uh, current sales tax. Georgia has one of the lowest sales tax of any state that has sales tax. It's amazing. A, a penny sales tax would add about over $700 million mm -hmm. of very well-known and, and very uh, predictable uh, revenues to Georgia's coffers, where a lottery would only, at the most, net 150 to $175 million. Now look at the relative interest that these two uh, mm -hmm. possibilities have created. Uh, the lottery, as I understand it, and I haven't been in, in the Chattanooga area in a couple of weeks, and, and I'm interested to see what they have said and how active the people have gotten. It's very controversial. I guarantee Reverend Hatcher, if, if the churches could get behind that one cent and, and, or some other uh, uh, form of revenue that we could come up with to where the people elected to those offices felt comfortable doing so, then I believe the lottery question would dry up and blow away. Well. Admittedly, the churches have been very active on this issue, but uh, the church members, of course, just comprise one segment of your constituents. That's exactly right. Are you sure that they're all going to be so excited about any kind of tax increase like well, that? Well, again, I don't believe the people uh, just care to have a lottery. I believe they see and realize that we have a budget crisis, a, a shortfall, and they see this as a, a non-taxing, a voluntary tax so to speak, that they would like to have a choice on. Now, we're, we've ruled out the entire possibility, and, and I think it should be considered that put on a statewide referendum, this thing could be beat like a dog. 
<laughs> okay. But you're not sure. I mean, have you done any polls or, you know, I anybody haven't done any polls. I'm relying on the ones that are coming from this area. Mm. All right. Reverend Hatcher, quickly, we have about and 30 seconds. Chances are, if it goes to the general population, it will be carried because of the metropolitan centers in Georgia, giving rural Georgia very little voice in it. I would like to have the opportunity personally to share in that tax, and I will not share in a lottery tax. All right. But. Well, thank you both for coming in and talking about this. We can see we're going to be talking about it for a couple of weeks to come here. We'll be back with a final word right after this. Hey, Fred? In the kitchen! Oh, great. You've even got your tools out. Why? What's the problem? It's our dishwasher. All of a sudden, it started thumping. Could you take a look? Sure. Let me just try this. Thumping, huh? Yeah. Let's check it out. Hey. Yeah, I really appreciate this. Hey, no problem. When unexpected problems occur around the house, be prepared with the Fix-It-Yourself series from Time Life Books. Well, let's see. Noisy dishwasher. Yeah. It's probably the water inlet valve, which is uh, right here. With its easy-to-follow drawings and step-by-step -step instructions, Fix-It-Yourself is the best way to make sure the job gets done right the first time. Ah, now we disconnect this hose. Yeah, that's got it. Then we pry out the inlet valve screen, rinse it, and clean it with a toothbrush. Uh, hey, that wasn't too tough. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty easy when you know how. <laughs> when you want to fix it once and fix it right, the Fix-It-Yourself series will give you all the help you need, plus the satisfaction of a job well done. It must be great to be so handy around the house. Well, these Time Life Fix-It-Yourself books do help. You should get them. I think I will. Examine your first book, Major Appliances, free for 15 days. About every other month, you'll receive another book on the same trial basis, like kitchen and bathroom plumbing, lawn and garden, and lighting and electricity. Keep only those you want. Cancel any time. With Fix-It Yourself, you can do all kinds of repairs with complete confidence while you save money. Hey, old buddy, guess what? VCR. I nope. The ceiling fan. Oh, looks okay to me. Well, sure, I fixed it myself. You did? Mm-hmm. With a little help. Call 1-800-637-9800 to examine major appliances free for 15 days. Decide to keep it and pay only $12.99 plus shipping and handling, and you'll receive a free seven-piece ratchet screwdriver set. Other volumes will follow one about every other month. Same trial basis. Keep only those you want. Cancel any time. Call 1-800-637-9800. Now I'm going to tell you what I think. There are good arguments both for and against a state lottery in Georgia. Sales taxes are low in Georgia, but the state is clearly in financial trouble. Schools need more money. Would voters prefer higher taxes or a lottery to raise money? However you answer that question, I think it's clear the people have a right to settle this issue. If a majority of them are against a lottery, Georgia won't get one. It's as simple as that. That's this edition of Tell Us What You Think. I'm Scott Montgomery. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next week.